Hello, and welcome back to SciTai Tech. In this video, I'm gonna show you to make a eutectic alloy called Fields Metal, which has a melting point of 62 degrees Celsius, or 144 Fahrenheit, and this metal has very interesting properties, and this metal is an excellent metal to use for casting. And it uses three elements, such as indium, bismuth, and tin. Let's get started. <laughs> And these are the items you're going to need to make for this project. The items you're going to need. Tin. Indium. And bismuth. I wrote down the percentage of each element that is needed to be able to create this eutectic alloy. What you'll need is 33% bismuth, 16% tin, and 51% indium. Combining these three elements will create Fields Metal. You can also weigh out the percentage into grams. I wrote down bisnin because that's the name I would like to call this eutectic alloy, even though it's called Fields Metal, but I like the sound of bisnin better. Just personal preference. I am right here, a very sensitive scale, and I want to weigh out the percentage of each element, starting with tin. And as you can see, 16% tin, or 16 grams of tin, which is exactly what I want. Next, weigh out the indium metal. And since indium is such a soft metal, I can easily scratch it with my nail, which means I can easily use scissors to cut this metal. So cut each piece, figuring out what the weight is going to be. And there, 51% indium, or 51 grams of indium. Next, I need to weigh out the bismuth. Okay, and now bismuth. I'm gonna go and cut a piece. And if you listen carefully, you can hear the crystalline structure cracking. Such a brittle metal. Gather up all the pieces and weigh it. And there, shall look just like this. I have all three of my elements ready. I have my indium, bismuth, and tin. Now I need to combine all three together to create the eutectic alloy. I have right here this saucepan, and I'm gonna combine all three of these elements together. Before I do that, I wanna do a small experiment since I know that indium and gallium rubbed together disturbs the crystalline structure and it creates a eutectic alloy instantly. I wanna see if indium does the same thing with the other elements. Rubbing indium and tin together, no reaction. Rub the indium with bismuth. Still no reaction. Rub the tin and bismuth. No, nope, no reaction. This means you cannot combine these metals together this way. They have to be melted together. Put them all inside the saucepan. And there we go, all in the saucepan. Next, I'm gonna take my hot air gun, and since my hot air gun has a temperature of 500 degrees Celsius, which is way above the melting point of all three of these metals, which means I should be able to use the hot air gun to combine all three of these elements together. Now apply the heat and wait patiently. Of course, a higher temperature would be a lot faster and easier, but this method works very well. I just need to be very patient. After 30 minutes of waiting, all three elements are now combined. And as you can see with the slag that is on top, it's mostly the oxide layer from the bismuth and a little bit of the tin as well. That's not an issue because the metal that is underneath will separate easily. Now what I'm gonna do is wait patiently for it to cool down just a little bit but not too much. And as you can see by taking this measurement, it measures at about 150 degrees Celsius, which is a little bit too hot to pour into a plastic container. So I'm gonna wait patiently for it to cool down, slightly cool to the touch. Take another measurement. And it measures out at about 158 degrees Fahrenheit and 70 degrees Celsius. There, perfect. Cool down enough 
and still above the melting point. Now I'm ready to pour it into my plastic container without melting it or damaging it. Screw off the top and pour it inside. shiny metal. Exactly what I hoped for. Well, it looks like I have too much. And the rest right here is most likely the oxide. the field's metal. Beautiful. Let's see if it crunches like a... Oh, it's strong. Oh, it's very strong. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's strong. It doesn't crunch like uh, indium does with the crystalline structure and bismuth. Oh, that's a strong metal. Wow. Very strong. See how strong this metal is, because trying to bend it, it's very strong. But yet, it can melt at a low temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. I want to see what happens if I try cutting it. Oh, it cuts easy. Oh, my... Yeah, it cuts... Yeah, it cuts very easily. Interesting. What about hardness? Can I scratch it with my nail? Like Indian? does not, so it has hardness to it. Can I cold weld it, like uh, indium can do? Nope, I cannot delight her here, and I'm going to see if I can melt it like candle wax and see what happens. Oh, it melts just like candle wax. How amazing. Poor conductor, because the whole metal is not getting hot as I do this. Yeah, you can see that it drips like candle wax. Interesting. Okay, so this has a crystalline structure inside. Now I want to see what happens if I pour it onto my hand. I'm gonna s now, this is still warm to the touch, so I'm going to see what happens if I pour it onto my hand. touch like what it feels like for candle wax. Well, as you can see, this is still very warm. And it also sticks like candle wax. Now look, no oxide layer. So everything that's inside here is basically the oxide basically all oxide from the uh, bismuth. Well, this part, part here is probably okay. And that one's okay. But I'll wait for it to cool and then do that again. All right, I'm gonna wait for that to cool down just a little bit and then I'll stick my finger in it. Okay, so I can get a print. got my fingerprint. Amazing. So this metal is excellent to use for casting, probably. To do fine detail casting. Silvery. I'm gonna go ahead and scoop this up. Pour it back in here. And remelt it. Perfect. 
see if it melts like a candle. Oh yeah, it does a little bit. See, it's solidified and cooled down. And as I was waiting, I was trying to swirl it around like this to see if it can form any crystals. And it doesn't seem to form any crystals like what bismuth would do, because if bismuth starts to cool down, and then you wait about a minute while holding it still, and then you start to turn it like this, and the liquid metal that's on top moves over to the side, you would see a crystalline structure. This doesn't seem to really do that, or I might be doing it wrong where I need to gradually cool it down because maybe it's very sensitive and there are very tiny, tiny crystals. What? Ah, there we go. Yeah, it comes off very nice. So I've tried remelting it and to try to make it form crystals and I melted it so many times and it does not seem to oxidize. So this metal doesn't oxidize almost, actually it doesn't oxidize at all. Still very shiny. This part here protected from the air smooth and shiny as the top, exposed to air. Now, typically with uh, indium and gallium, it can stain your hands. So I've washed my hands and I'm gonna try rubbing it and seeing if maybe I can stain my hands like what gallium would do, uh, like what indium would do, because indium, if I did this, my hand would look gray. And it actually doesn't. Maybe just a little bit, I think. Let me try again on this hand. Yeah, I'm going to try right here. This looks very clean, so I'm going to try. No? This does not stain your hands. How very interesting this is. Okay, so now for my next experiment, I'm going to see if it wets glass, like what gallium would do. So far, this metal doesn't seem to wet anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and just melt a little bit inside here. Amazing how it melts like a candle. Alright. I'm gonna go like that. Oh, look at that. Looking at the bottom right here, it works like a mirror. How interesting. Cools fast on the glass, sticks to glass. Let me see if it comes off from glass easy. Yep. Wow, it does not stick to glass. Perfectly clean. So this metal does not stick to glass. But interesting, forming it on a smooth surface, look how shiny that is. So this could almost work like a mirror. Now this plastic vial that this was this metal was inside of looks like it stuck to it, but in my opinion I don't think it really did. So here's a little piece here, I'm going to see if I can... Oh look at that, it comes right off. So yeah, it does not even stick to this metal either. This metal does not stick to plastic either. It does not stick to plastic. In my opinion, this is actually a very clean metal. It doesn't seem to want to stick to anything. How interesting. And there you have it. The old metal that I like to also call Bizanin, but the old metal. And there you have it. Now you know how to make this very interesting new tactic alloy called Fields Metal, or what I like to call Bizanin. This metal can be very useful to use for making prototyping 
metal parts or metal casting, or to make metal figures that pick up extreme fine detail. This metal seems to be very useful for many craft type projects, or maybe industrial type projects. This seems very interesting, and I'm probably going to use this in future videos. Thank you for watching SciTai Tech, I hope you learned something new, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course click on the bell icon to be notified for future SciTai Tech videos. Till the next tech, goodbye!